Given the conic section using this polar equation, we want to find the x and y intercepts and the focus. Let's begin by determining what type of conic section we have. When we have a polar equation in this form, where we have sine theta here, if we write the equation in this form, where we have a one here in the denominator, this will be a conic section where E is greater than one, is the eccentricity with a focus at the pole. So if we write the equation in this form, we can determine the eccentricity, which will tell us what type of conic section we have, but also because we can write the equation in this form, we know it has a focus at the pole. So we want this three to be a positive one, so we'll divide the numerator and denominator by three. We want the equation to be in the form r equals e times d divided by the quantity one minus e sine theta. So again, if we divide the numerator and denominator by three, six divided by three is two, three divided by three is one, and then three sine theta divided by three would be one sine theta. So this tells us the eccentricity is equal to positive one, and therefore we have a parabola. And since we have a parabola, there's only one focus, and because our equation fits this form, we know the focus is at the pole, which would be this point here, or using rectangular coordinates, it'd be the point zero comma zero. And now we'll complete a table of values to find the x and y intercepts. We'll notice when theta is zero radians or terminates here, or when theta terminates here at pi radians, we should be able to find where it crosses the x-axis or the x-intercepts. So for our table of values, let's set theta equal zero radians and pi radians to find the x-intercepts. And then to find the y-intercept, we'll let theta be equal to pi over two radians and three pi over two radians. And now we'll perform substitution into this form of our equation. So when theta is zero radians, we'd have two divided by the quantity one minus sine zero, which is equal to zero. So we'd have two divided by one or two. So when theta is zero radians, r is equal to positive two. So when theta is zero radians, or terminates here, r is two, which would be this point, which would be an x-intercept, with Cartesian coordinates of two comma zero. Next, when theta is pi radians, we'd have r equals two divided by the quantity one minus, well sine pi is also zero, so r is two again. So now when the angle terminates here along the negative x-axis, r is positive two, which would be this point here. Using Cartesian or rectangular coordinates, this would be the point negative two comma zero. And then finally, to find the y-intercept, we selected pi over two radians and three pi over two radians. So let's perform those substitutions. So when theta is pi over two radians, we'd have two divided by one minus sine pi over two is equal to one. Here we have a denominator of zero, and division by zero is undefined, and therefore r is undefined, when theta is pi over two radians. So now let's try three pi over two radians. When theta is three pi over two radians, we'd have two divided by the quantity one minus, well sine three pi over two is equal to negative one. So this would be two divided by two, or positive one. So when theta is three pi over two radians, r is equal to positive one, so when the angle terminates here along the negative y-axis, r is positive one, which would be this point here, our y-intercept, which has rectangular coordinates or Cartesian coordinates of zero, negative one. So our parabola would look something like this. Now the question doesn't ask us for this, but notice how if we were asked to find the directrix, we know that e times d must equal positive two, and since e is equal to one, d is equal to positive two. And because our parabola opens up, notice how the directrix would have to be 
below our parabola, and it would have to be two units below the pole, which means our directrix would be this horizontal line here, y equals negative two. And remember from our previous work, the distance from the directrix to the vertex is eight units, which is the same distance from the vertex to the focus. So analyzing our graph, it's not quite to scale, but notice how here we have a equals one, and this also verifies a equals one. I hope you found this helpful.